Frankenstein, directed by James Whale and adapted from the novel of the same name by Mary Shelley. For those of you that, you know, love horror and your classic horror will know the basic sort of plot when it comes to Frankenstein. So yeah, Henry Frankenstein wants to create life and in an attempt in doing that, he basically assembles uh, different body parts of the deceased. Uh, he goes grave robbing and basically puts all these different parts of people, dead people together to create new life. Henry Frankenstein has got a god complex. And of course he succeeds and he gives birth to the classic horror monster that we all know. Frankenstein's monster. But being confused and traumatised, uh, the creature escapes into the countryside and terrorises the local residents. And then it's up to the authorities, uh, the local, the village people and Dr. Frankenstein himself to hunt down the creature that he created and destroy it. Now, as you know, I reviewed the sequel, Bride of Frankenstein, before actually watching and reviewing the first film. But it was very evident from the start that this was going to lack the humour that the second movie had. And it did, throughout the entire film. The, um, it, this was a much more darker, morbid and tense experience compared to its sequel. It's a very, very good sequel. And the only comic relief you sort of get within this movie and the humour is from a Baron Frankenstein, Henry's Frankenstein's father. It's his character really, Baron Frankenstein, who sort of provides the comic relief uh, during the duration of the movie, but it's it's very limited, but it's also it's very needed Because uh, this is quite a it is much darker than his sequel And I felt like he did need that little bit of humor Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein like in the sequel was also very 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 good in this I loved his performance. He conveyed real madness and obsession through his performance and he, he his performance gave me goosebumps and especially in scenes in which he delivers lines uh, like it's alive it's alive and it, it did it gave me chills it gave me goosebumps and I was all down to his great performance as this mad scientist who is sort of really becoming more detached from reality and society and he conveys that very well through his performance. I thought Colin Clive was great. He sought the horror and the madness through his performance and it felt real, it felt natural. It didn't really feel hammy or put on, it felt real and that's what I liked about his performance. Uh, Boris Karloff was again great as the creature. Uh, I really, really liked his performance. Again, like in the sequel, he does these very sort of subtle uh, emotions and grunts, which, you know, gets you, the viewer, to feel really, you know, re feel really sympathetic towards the character and get emotionally attached to the character. You know, it's all down, and that's all down to Boris Karloff's very, very good performance. And he, he adds a certain amount of humanity and soul to the character, I felt, which is quite funny because he's playing a character, a uh, creature, which is made up of dead people. But he does, he, he gives the character, he gives this character uh, a soul and a sense of humanity and heart even. And I like that and I thought that was actually vital for this story and he achieves that through his performance. I think he did a brilliant job. And again, like its sequel, I really liked the lighting, you know, the cinematography. It had a very sort of ghostly, eerie atmosphere and a lot of that was down to the shadows and the lighting. This for me felt more like a horror than a sequel. And the tone was a lot more darker and morbid than the sequel. And that's not a complaint. Um, I liked it. It's all, it also has a very, very smart script as well, and it's very the script is very thought provoking. Some of the lines in this movie it does it's it gets you thinking, and it was just very, very clever. And there's some really powerful scenes in this movie. One of those scenes being fr uh, when Frankenstein's monster he've just he hasn't long been born again, 
you could say and um he reaches out to the light and it was a very very powerful scene i thought which in a way i do felt like this film had a sort of underlying religious theme going on it wasn't as evident as it was in the sequel it was a hell of religion and the theme of religion was he- was a lot more evident in the bride of frankenstein than it is in this but it is there really like the special effects in this film especially the electrical effects during the creation of the creature i was actually really really impressed um especially when it comes to those effects the electrical effects but overall you know the special effects were pretty impressive this you know especially if you consider the time this movie was made and released now there was a scene in this movie that i found to be very tense and tragic and dark and <laughs> that sums up this movie but there was this one particular scene that i thought was quite it was tense and it you sh- sort of it conveyed a lot of emotions really because we've got a creature that's very confused, uh, doesn't know where he is, and he stumbles upon he stumbles upon this girl, um, in the countryside, and it's harmless. He, you know, he, he goes, he kneels by the girl, and he's curious, and he's smiling, and he's sniggering, and he got all these subtle uh, expressions that Boris Koloff is conveying, uh, with the performance, and it does. It's one of those scenes. That again helps you grow emotionally attached to the creature and feel sorry for the creature. But then he goes and does something which is very tragic. But the creature had no, you know, the creature doesn't know what he was doing. He didn't want to do what he, was, what he did which was kill the girl. And I thought it was a pretty dark scene. And it happens. And it, it was very powerful. It was a very powerful moment in the film. And I didn't expect this film to go that dark or that deep even and it did it, it, in a way it was heartbreaking but it's also a scene that explores that human side of the creature and it's in those scenes where i thought boris karloff really added a lot of humanity and gave the creature soul and it's a tragic scene apparently it's a very powerful scene and there's also a very powerful scene of the car of uh, the father carrying his dead daughter through the street and it gives you goosebumps it gives you chills and it's it's very morbid very dark and i was like just didn't expect that but again you know those it's those powerful moments like with frankenstein accidentally killing the girl it it all helps add that emotional impact during the third act and so it was those i felt like these scenes were really needed in this film and in a way i can understand why the censors at the time were very sort of like oh i think we need to get rid of that i think we need to cut that i can see that but i no they they need the film needed it the story needed those moments james whale um again great direction from james whale I like some of the camera angles in the movie, like in its sequel, uh, especially during the creation of the creature scene. I uh, really like the choice of angles and how the way they move the camera for some of the scenes. Like there's a street party going on and this camera just moves through the street and the crowd. And I really like that. It gives you a sort of, it gives you the viewer a perception of a much larger world and a much larger moment. And it, it does, it makes things feel a little bit, it felt it made the world feel a little bit bigger and larger so yeah i really dug what they did with the camera in this film so yeah like its sequel this is a very tragic movie it's a very tragic story and you can't help but feel sympathetic towards the creature and that's all down to the way the creature is uh, portrayed and performed by boris karloff he did he does a great job as the creature it was a heartbreaking performance and yeah you can't feel but feel emotionally attached to the monster and in a way it comes across like to me anyway as a viewer for the first time watching this film he, he, he it felt like he was the victim and that we were the monsters and again you know through the script you know it throws very uh, deep sort of messages and questions at you the viewer and it asks, you know, and it does explores uh, themes like religion. And is it right for us to play God? You know, is it right for us to bring the dead 
you know, back to life. Life is created, but then it's abandoned because we've because we realise we've made a mistake, and so then we hunt that mistake down and try and destroy it. Is that right? Is that right for us to do? Um, and it just it throws all those questions at you, and it is a deep film. It's a complex film, just like its sequel. I really, really liked Frankenstein. Along with a smart script, a uh, great direction from James Whale, and great performances from all the cast, especially Colin Clive and Boris Koloff, you know, them being the standouts, they managed to create a smart and deep and tragic horror, uh, which will give you the creeps, which will send shivers up your spine, it will give you goosebumps, but it will also pull up the heartstrings, and it also throws questions at you it's a complex movie and it brings up questions on morality and it's it's a deep film the overall experience felt very real the horror felt real and a lot of that was down to the performances from the cast and the script this was a very tragic heartbreaking movie and it will give you chills and I really, really enjoyed it. If you're like me, and again, until a few nights ago, I'd nev I've never seen uh, Frankenstein, I highly recommend you do. I will be giving 1931's Frankenstein an A star. <laughs> guys looking for a film to watch tonight i highly recommend frankenstein if you're lost and you can't find one it's one of the best horrors i've ever seen actually and i never i never thought i'd find myself saying that highly recommend it so yeah thanks guys for watching i really do appreciate it uh what do you think of 1931's frankenstein directed by james will um have you seen it before uh what's your opinions let me know in the comments below and again, you know, thanks for so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you like what you see and you share the same passion as me, then why not hit subscribe?